From large mammals to tiny microorganisms, forests are an important source of our lives. But the future of our forests is uncertain, especially with disturbances like windstorms, wildfires and bark beetles, which are increasing due to climate change. In the IMA Astro project, researchers investigate how we can adapt our forests and their management to reduce the impacts of climate change and disturbances. The project also explores what role forests can play in the global effort to mitigate climate change. To understand the dynamics that are happening and project them into the future, researchers in iMaestro use forest models and we'll learn more about the amazing opportunities of those forest models now. One of the major challenges today in forestry uh, is to define adaptation strategies to limit the negative impact of climate change and disturbance on the provision of ecosystem services. And uh, one uh, of these current uh, strategy proposed by managers and researchers consists in uh, trying to diversify the stand structure of our forests at different scales from stand to the country scale. We don't have so much scientific evidence that this strategy uh, is relevant for different contexts. I maestro precisely aim to uh, bring new insights of whether the working for complexity or for uh, diversification uh, principle uh, is a relevant strategy to foster resilience of forests uh, in the long term and then to sustain ecosystem services in the long term. But what is the role of forestry and how do different management approaches influence our forests? Usually there's two different kind of extremes. One is you would do what's called a land sparing approach. So that's when you might have a lot of forest reserves, something like the EU biodiversity strategy is trying to do to do ecosystem services like biodiversity protection. And then you might have that on half of your landscape and then the other half of the landscape you have plantations where you produce timber where you do the economic function. And then on the other extreme you might have a land or sharing approach. That's where you combine both the ecological and the economic functions in the same time, in the same place. And a good example of that might be close to nature management. Like you hear a lot about that in Europe. Those are two extremes, but there are all kinds of combinations in between those. And so the job of forestry really, I think, is to figure out, and this is people, we have to do this all over the world, how do we best produce timber, and there's a growing demand for timber, at least cost to native biodiversity. So finding that balance is super important, and that's where iMaestro comes in. I think it's really cool what they're trying to do with the models. There's been almost no experiments around the world that have tried to test what approach land sparing or land sharing is best at maximizing timber and biodiversity. Then one reason for that is because you would need to do an experiment lasting maybe a hundred years and it would have to be replicated in different places. It would be logistically very challenging and it would cost a lot of money and we would have to wait a long time for the results. The first challenge is really to be able to project in the future uh, the provision of ecosystem services. So for instance, wood production, uh, but also carbon storage, that's very important. And also habitats for biodiversity. Then you would see if you are able to promote uh, this ecosystem services jointly or if there are trade-offs between these ecosystem services. And we already know from the literature that there are important trade-offs, for instance, between biodiversity and uh, wood production in some cases. And so that's where the models come into play. I mean, I'm not a modeler, but these models are really cool because, well, they have several different models and they're based on real world landscapes with real world starting data. And so then you can start to look at what's the optimal approach. And I think that's the coolest part about iMaestro. There are different types of data needed to develop and apply forest simulation models. To set up the models, we need experimental data and information, for example, on forest growth, forest mortality and forest regeneration. It is also important that the models are able to reproduce the regional forest conditions. We use data coming from uh, urban laser scanning. Uh, this is uh, a, a technique, uh, you, you put kind of sensor on a plane 
and this sensor uh, measures the, the forest uh, all of the, the territory for very big ones and for, for example for the French one we had uh, this uh, 50 hectares 50,000 hectares of, of forest so if you want to measure all the trees all of this it's not possible if you take your shoes and, and go to measure them uh, so with this sensor on the plane you can measure a lot of things and then you have to transform that so it's kind of a tricky process but we have specialists for that. So we transform these uh, measures from the plane to estimations of, of tree, uh, tree measurements, tree diameters and height and so on. And then these measurements were um, used to initialize the, 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 the models before starting the simulations with, with these four models. We also needed information about the different natural disturbances that affect forests. Our researchers collected this information from all possible sources, from forest inventory data to newspaper articles. Then all those records were prepared in a big and comprehensive European database on forest disturbances and can now be used for disturbance modeling. So for the modeling, we chose just to, to use the windstorms and, and the fires. We made just an analysis of all the major windstorms we found in Europe and we base our modeling just on observed frequency of damage by windstorm. From 1980 to 2020, I think we have a complete record of storms. So I think in this way we have a kind of realistic uh, scenario of, of how storms could happen in the future with this kind of similar frequency as we observed in the past. And I really think forest management here uh, like it contributes to, to like having this effect of not, not having too much damage. So I think also in future, if you know disturbances are increasing, I think we have the possibility to, to change our management to, to uh, limit the impacts of this, this future event. We learned what models can do and how they can predict forest functions under disturbances. We also explored modeling of different climate and forest management scenarios. But now we are curious. How does modeling actually look like? And what kind of models did our scientists use? I'm a Yestro researcher, Mats Manken, shows us how the modeling program works. We fill our environment by adding data. So this is now the model data, and then we can also need data from, from the forest, so observe, observe data. And what we want to do in the this, in this script is to compare the difference between how the, they compare the model data and the observed data. We can see the, the outcome, um, so the figure, and we now compare like the 4C, which is the model, our modeled diameter and our um, national forest inventory data, which is the observed data. Yeah, we have these four different models uh, from uh, very detailed models that look at um, single trees and have really a lot of details on the uh, geometry of the trees and microhabitats like um, some, some bird holes and so on. But then we also have a lot coarser uh, resolution models that do not look at single trees but at, for example, um, only at the stand, like stand scale um, variables that summarize, so to say, single trees into yeah, more aggregated variables. If we run the models and uh, we compare them to the same observed data, we see that there are large uh, differences to how, how accurate they represent the, the um, real world, so to say. But if we then do some simulation experiments, for example, to see how resilient forests are to uh, storm damages, then we see that in our four models there are really uh, similar results um, indicating similar trends, so or not only trends but um, in general resilience of different types of forests. And this is really interesting because um, this is exactly what we are looking for. Since we are not only doing modeling in the, in the project, we have also some empirical studies um, that yeah, somehow link to what we do in the modeling and um, that is really important because um, yeah, sometimes modelers tend to lose uh, the link to reality, but we have some colleagues that, that also do 
uh, work in the forest and um, really work on uh, yeah, real forest stands and but with the same questions that we also ask and I think that is also one thing that I find really interesting that that we can somehow draw the connection between what we find in the models and uh, then also what uh, colleagues find in the real world uh, outside of our labs, outside of our computers. To avoid losing the important link to reality Mats just mentioned, our researchers work with three case studies in different parts of Europe. One of those case studies is located in the Milic Forest in Poland and led by University of Krakow. Researcher Luisa Timinska studies height growth and mortality risk modeling there. In the first paper, uh, precipitation and temperature was included in the high grow model. And in the second one, uh, we <coughs> uh, include stand density as factor, as additional factor in high grow models. IMAESTRO researchers found out that the highest trees in Millage Forest were more vulnerable to mortality particularly to mortality caused by drought, because it seems that taller trees have a greater water demand. They also discovered that age is an important factor, so drought mortality could be mitigated or reduced by using shorter rotation periods, which means harvesting earlier. But what are the real impacts of modeling on practitioners and decision makers? In Poland, IMAESTRO work led to a big collaboration project with the Polish state forests. It was extremely interesting for foresters and after such meetings with foresters our state forest decided to give us another huge project in which we will be, uh, we'll have possibility to model this uh, probability of disturbances for whole Poland and for eight species. Therefore the fruits of the iMaestro is just this new project. Finally, we want to know how decision makers in general can benefit from our modeling results. How can this influence decision making? First of all, it's really crucial that the um, awareness about climate change and disturbance is, is raised so that the, the practitioners understand better how the climate has changed, how the extreme events that we are facing now and the disturbance regimes, how they actually differ from what we are used to from the past. That is important because they need to realize they can't continue with uh, business as usual anymore. So the, the previous practices are no longer suitable for the current situation with the changing climate. And um, so first of all, raise awareness. Second, understand uh, the impacts. And then third, really try to identify the response options.